Hello, welcome back. Uh, here we are now, uh, interval estimates on population means. Now, I've actually uh, just recorded sort of a prequel to this video, one that uh, explains a little bit more of the concept of a confidence interval, what they are and why they work or how they work. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to kind of jump right into um, calculating uh, these um, margin of errors and calculating these interval estimates. So uh, let's just get into part A, calculate the standard error of the mean. So all that means when we're looking at the standard error, this is uh, denoted sigma x bar, and this is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, we have a standard deviation of 24, sample size is 35. So this is just 24 divided by the square root of 35. And so here's my calculator. Oops. <coughs> So 24 divided by root 30, oops, typo, 24 divided by root 35, there we go. So 4.0, let's call it 4.06, there's 4.06, so there's our, our standard error of the mean, 4.06. Uh, calculate the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval. So this is uh, the, the margin of error. You know, if we're if we're building up to a confidence interval, the formula that we're using here is this. Okay, and sometimes you'll see it written, or perhaps even more commonly, you'll see it written like this. So that standard error of the mean is sort of expanded into its components, and z alpha by two. Remember, 1 minus alpha uh, is our confidence level. How confident are we that the population mean exists within the limits that we're going to calculate? So if we're doing a 95% confidence interval, then that means that 1 minus alpha is equal to 0.95, which means alpha is equal to 0.05. So then coming back to our formula here, this is x bar plus or minus z alpha divided by two, so 0 0.025 sigma square root of n. So our margin of error uh, for the confidence interval is this piece here. All right, it's that, we call it that critical value, that value that, that corresponds with our level of confidence uh, times the, the standard error of the mean. So we then need to go to our z tables, and uh, I think this is already defined. Yeah, I didn't clean this up from my last video that I that I produced. So what what we have to do? I'll erase it, and we'll just start over here. When we're looking for critical values, or we're looking for z values, it can be a little bit more tedious than when we're looking for probabilities. And some of the other exercises that we did, we were looking for a probability. So, you know, we had a z value. We had, you know, at this negative 3.25, let's say. So we could find the values that corresponded with our critical value of interest, and then we would find the corresponding probability. That was that was the easier way of using these tables. In this context, we're sort of going the other way. We have a probability that we're looking for and we need to find the corresponding z value. That can be more tedious because now what we have to do is really scan this big body of numbers uh, and look for the probability of interest. So in our case, we're looking for uh, alpha divided by 2 of 0 0.025 because that will give us the value here, so this z, such that this area in the lower tail is 0 0.025. And then we'll also need the value here. And this is perfectly symmetric. So these values are actually going to be identical uh, in absolute value, uh, such that out here we've got that region of 0 0.025. So that gives us then, in, in between these, that's our 95%, right? So I need to find this value, uh, sorry, this value, 0 0.025 somewhere in all of these numbers. Now, I'm a little bit more familiar with this table. I've used it a lot, so I have a pretty good idea of where to look. And so I'm going to scan through, and here I'll find it right here, 0 0.025.
And so once I've got that probability, now I come out this way and I see OK. When I want to figure out what the Z value is, that's a negative 1.9. And then the second decimal place is up here, so that's 1.96. So this is negative 196. And because the distribution is perfectly symmetric, I know that this value is just positive 196. So that gives me our, our critical value that we need for this calculation. Uh, and of course, this is why you know this is plus or minus in that formula, because it's symmetric. That critical value is the same um, for each margin of error later on and outside of the scope of this video but that's not always going to be the case different distributions uh, are no longer symmetric so it gets a little bit a little bit more tedious so here are all we need we have x bar plus or minus 1.96 times that standard error which we already calculated up here is 4.06 so that margin of error is x bar plus or minus 1.96 times 4.06, so 798, uh, 796, I think. Let me just make sure I didn't mess that up. Oops, uh, 0.796, yeah. Good, so there's our, our margin of error, 7.96. And then calculate the limits of the interval. Well, all we have to do now, let me just, re oops. Why is this not an eraser when I want it to be an eraser? There we go. So now all I need is my uh, sample mean, which is given in the problem, sample mean of 122. So to calculate those limits of that interval, my sample mean goes right in the middle, and then this is plus one margin of error, this is minus one margin of error from that sample mean. So let's... Uh, Let's just do that, 1.20, I mean, sorry, 120. Let's get this out of the way over here. Minus 7.96, so that's 112.04. And then this, uh, well, this will be plus 796, so this is 127.96. So, so there we have it. Uh, our point estimate, that uh, sample mean always exactly in the middle, and then this is plus one margin of error, and this is minus one margin of error, and now I can say I'm 95% confident that the true, whoops, the true unknown population mean, mu, whatever it is, is going to be somewhere in here. I don't know where, if I knew where, I wouldn't have to do these estimates. Um, so, somewhere in there, two and a half percent chance that I'm wrong, right? Maybe it's, uh, sorry, five percent chance that I'm wrong. Two and a half percent chance that it's way out here. Two and a half percent chance that it's out here somewhere. But we're happy with a 95 percent possibility uh, that it is somewhere between these, oops, these two limits. Good? Okay, that's uh, as simple as that, right? Always. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.